All right, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. It's going to be uh, 11 a.m. Central Time coming to you from the great state of Texas. It is uh, May 9th, 2022. And uh, without further ado, let's hop on over here to the board. Uh, hey, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, bell for notification. Make sure you get the latest and greatest. And also remember, if you want to support the channel, you can do so via membership here on YouTube or over on Patreon. And it is always appreciated. So. Without further ado, let's go over and just take a look at the board again. This is uh, uh, just pulling together the C-17s, air refuelers, the things that we see uh, here uh, on a regular basis now. It seems like the East Coast is really getting a lot of the focus now. Uh, we do see some things bubbling over into the central U.S., but for the most part, it's East Coast-centric. So let's look at, if we would, take a quick gander at the watch list and i'll just show you guys what we've got up right now uh currently a couple p8s we've got a um that looks to just be a terramar or a terra bird sorry a terra terramar uh, it's a terra bird it's just one of the white tails uh, they usually they send those out for deploying uh, if there's a crisis somewhere things like that so uh, but over to Europe, that's really where most of the activity is going on relative to our, to our watch list. Now, uh, you're going to notice, again, we are still in that same area just right there to the left side of the Black Sea. Uh, they are watching it very closely. I'm going to show you, too, we had a SAM flight actually go into that region. Uh, but something is happening right there in that ports area. Also notice the NATO bird doing that tight circle. Somebody underneath there is getting watched very closely. They are doing man in the middle. That's a data grab whenever they do that. So, all right. Uh, yeah, this right here is kind of paint, paint you the picture of the, the border for Ukraine. Uh, and then, of course, here, you notice over Poland, they seem to be going uh, up and to the left, right? And, um, and then all the way up into just shy of Finland, uh, in the same area along that Baltic Sea area. So, that means they're looking at stuff in that general region. Again, uh, just seem to be deploying more assets into that, that area. Latvia, Estonia, of course, the Baltic Sea. And then these are the birds that are coming back home. So uh, you got that R-135. That's actually a British R-135. And then we've got Jake 11, which is a U.S. one. And then that Duke, uh, that, that, uh, that Cessna Citation, it's just given VIP tours in the area, it looks like. So uh, he's been bouncing back and forth right up to the border and things like that. So I don't know who's on that, what's on that. Somebody definitely in the region is getting some eyes on some things. Um, but again, it looks like we are continuing to see NATO build up. Um, it's a lighter day than it usually is, but uh, they are still doing that nonetheless. So let's give it to the heavy lifts just to show you what's taking place over the last 12 hours now you do see that one green line that goes zinging across the center there we'll look at that here in just a minute that's back in the u.s now but uh, a couple a400s dropping some stuff right there in the region uh to the left of belarus and then up here in finland again that is uh more activity uh as they start to get engaged in this more so than uh some of the other nato allies out there so but, uh, yeah, a lot of C-17, a lot of uh, heavy lifts, long lifts. And then let's hop back over here to uh, the U.S. and just show you, again, East Coast concentration. We've been watching this for about two months now. Uh, this long one coming across is a C-17 that made it across the drink. Uh, looks like it, it uh, touched down there, unless it's a bad data feed somewhere um, here in the U.S., and then it's bounced back up already airborne. But, again, East Coast-centric. Uh, now, there is some activity going on in the Georgia area, but just look at uh, the concentration there. Again, north and south of D.C. Um, we'll just continue to watch it. But uh, I feel like there's definitely, they're moving supplies or they're doing something there. And again, the rest of the U.S. is a little quiet. Uh, most, of the, most of the activity, other than that one coming out of uh, California, it looks like, uh, is very quiet. It is all focused on East Coast. Don't know why that is. <laughs> but something is definitely, uh, they're definitely moving assets within this, rain, this this region right here. And so we will continue to watch it. But again, now it's almost two months straight where we've seen them doing some type of a buildup in here. Uh, now, we do have some um, 
military exercises going on here in Georgia. I'll show you the headline that covers that in just a minute also. Uh, that would indicate for air refuelers and some dog fighting stuff. So a lot of fighters, but not really anything to, to indicate all of the C-17, C-130 C activity across the eastern seaboard. So, okay, let's get over here to our board here just to show you what's going on from a... Uh, volcano activity still got three of them firing down here in this area and then of course about five of them here between central and south america kind of the normal queue right now um, we do see them pop up here in japan that one's quiet right now and the one up here in russia is quiet right now too but three of them down here that's uh that's a little unusual we've had it we've had four recently and then you get japan popping in there and it's uh, it gets a little hectic but um We'll continue to keep our eye on that again these are ash alerts for pilots so if you get in here a little closer you can see uh, this is Dukono and uh, Ibu and you can see both of them are spewing pretty good uh, sections of ash there all these little warning boxes um, that you can see again pilots don't want to fly through that that stuff is a really super fine um, particles of glass and it will tear up an engine an aircraft engine pretty well um, also not good to breathe so if you live in this area uh, you definitely want to be wearing a respirator because that stuff gets into your uh, lungs and it is it's like super duper fine it's like dust particles but they're they're glass it's not good can't get rid of it so okay let's bounce over here i do want to show you this is that nato bird we were talking about remember right here in cast uh constant constanta uh, I'll keep wanting to say Constantinople, but that is not it. That's in a different location. But anyway, Constanta is the spot that we keep seeing a lot of this activity. Now, again, that NATO bird doing that perfect circle, man in the middle, they are becoming the cell tower in that area. So somebody, they have eyes on somebody in this general area. I don't know what the range is on, a, on the NATO um, sentries. Uh, probably a lot larger than what we have on our little Cessnas. I can tell you the Cessnas that you see are the P-12s that run up and do that man-in-the-middle stuff like over uh, Arizona we were watching. Uh, my understanding is about 20 miles or line of sight uh, out of about 20-mile range. Uh, so I would imagine this is military-grade stuff, so it's probably a lot stronger than that. So they may be looking pretty far out on that. So anyway, data point. Continue to watch it, but again, something definitely has got eyes on or some people worried in this general area. All right, now we we're talking about the air-to-air -air combat training going on in that uh, Century Savannah area. Uh, that, I don't believe, is an indication of why we see this uptick in traffic uh, down here because we've been watching this now for about two months, and it's not going just into Savannah. This stuff is all the way up and down the eastern seaboard all the way down into Florida, all the way up into Massachusetts. So um, it would indicate to me they're putting supplies in, if I had to guess. Typically, if it's going to be uh, vehicles, uh, they would be putting that on rail if they're moving a lot of stuff in. So you'd see a lot of rail cars going in and out of the eastern side of the house. Um, they would do that, too, if they were pushing uh, stuff out across the drink. They put it on rail, bring it into the ports of, say, Savannah or, or the like, something in Jacksonville, and then they would boat it across the drink, right? It's a lot less expensive, and um, you definitely don't drive that stuff in, okay? So, um, but more than likely, that stuff would come in by rail car, uh, and you wouldn't really, that wouldn't be what you're seeing. These C-130s and the C-17s are probably bringing in, I, it could be anything from MREs to water supplies to anything that's staging, pre-staging, uh, to support troops uh, logistically, okay? So, uh, again, we'll keep our eye on that. Munitions as well, you know, ammo, um, heavy equipment, some of it, all right? But uh, get back over here. Let's get into, so uh, this is the Century Savannah. Air National Guard, uh, just giving you a noise advisory, started the 25th, and it runs through May 15th. So it's running through this weekend, but this is uh, combat readiness, that is the general region they're going to be doing it, just to give you kind of a, a, an idea um, of where to look. Again, fighters, probably not going to see a lot of it, okay, because it is fighters. What you will see are air refuelers up that would give you an indicator that fighters are there, okay. 
All right, over here to Flashbang schedule. And uh, today he's not doing much but coming. Uh, let's see here. He departs to Delaware, uh, in, or sorry, from Delaware en route to the White House. Uh, he spent the weekend back up there at his, um, at his home in Delaware. And then uh, this one I thought was pretty interesting right here. Ukraine Democracy Defense Lend-Lease Act of 2022. That is basically just green light and more free stuff going to Ukraine. Uh, I don't know how you send stuff in for a, a Lend-Lease uh, when it's a war product. How do you get that back? I don't know. I mean, if it's commercial and you're doing like a wet lease and uh, or just a regular lease, right? Um, you get it back and there's a fee associated with it. You're basically, it's powered by the hour, so to speak, right? And so you're paying for uh, per flight hour. But this is more like, uh, hey, we're going to loan you a whole bunch of stuff for war. And uh, more than likely, I don't know how you recover it. Um, I don't think our universal ID um, on military product is quite to the standard it needs to be to track everything that we're sending over there. So, uh, and I'm just telling you that from an insider perspective, uh, there was a lot of work still to be done, even though that, that, uh, that initiative was rolled out years ago. Um, it's, uh, it's not there yet. So, okay, let's get over here to our map. Uh, we're going to take a look at what's going on with Shanghai and the like. We'll look at, uh, some of the ports, but you can see, Shanghai is pretty stacked still. It is moving, um, although there is still a lot of stuff shut down. Uh, but that went on. That shutdown was almost a month, maybe a little over a month. And in some cases, it's still ongoing. Uh, but you can see there's a lot of boats still sitting out there. Um, the red ones are, are oil tankers. The green are cargo. Um, not uncommon for them to have a large amount anchored, uh, but not to this level. Okay, And if you head down south into the south side of china you can see still kind of continues on so it's pretty um pretty stagnant there from a um, cargo vessel perspective so we're not going to see anything for a while now what we will see are our ports start to empty out because we get so much stuff from from china so this is a good example um, this is long beach you may remember we had almost 70 ships in there uh at one point up to 100 at one point um these are, you got less than a dozen. There's probably six or eight in here. Uh, the red ones, again, oil tankers. Green ones are cargo. Nothing there. The ones sitting in at the port are being unloaded. And so once they exfil, uh, that place is emptying out pretty quickly. That, that's a bad indicator for us. All right. Now we get rid of Black Sea. You can see that constant, constant flow of goods headed in and out of Russia coming across right there at these two pinch points. Istanbul is a big, big area. And then this right here, this is the area that we got all the interest in. I don't know what's going on out there. You can see what is showing on the, on the map, oil tankers, a couple cargo ships, but for the most part, it is, uh, you know, I don't know. There's, they are definitely interested in something in that general area right there. And, and uh, I'm not really sure exactly what it is, but this is the place uh, right here. Okay. So you could have some oligarchs in there. You could have, uh, there's no telling you could have some Russian military vessels in there. Uh, again, the reason I point that out is because Bucharest, which is right down the road, not very far. Uh, that is a big hub for NATO and for the U S and Sofia here in Bulgaria is a very large hub, uh, as well. Okay. So that's why I point these things out. All right, let's get over here to the SAM flights. I do want to show you, we had one, of course, we've got nothing showing here. We've had two SAM flights over the weekend, one that departed, went over to Europe, and one that actually came up out of Costa Rica uh, that landed last night. I was hoping to pull those in, but I had a little bit of a hard time tracking them and, and getting uh, some, some solid data on there. So, uh, But right now, we're going to look at SAM 984, and I'm just going to show you it took off. Uh, let's just kind of look at the history of this real fast. Rolled out a joint base on Thursday. It went over here to where uh, Constanta, right? So that is that location right here that we were just talking about uh, in the Black Sea. Uh, where are you? I know you're in here somewhere. Um, I'm up too high. That's what the problem is. Okay. Anyway, this is the spot as we, as we look at it right in here where they flew into. So again, you got dignitaries now flying into that area. And um, 
So that would put them in there on Friday. That's kind of when we started to see all of that activity going on there. We've got a lot of uh, reconnaissance happening in that area. Then they went into Bucharest. Again, large military base installation for, um, for the U.S. and for NATO. Uh, and then they came back today. And so this one, uh, as they were returning to the US, U.S., you'll notice they bugged out. As soon as they got out uh, west of uh, the U.K., uh, they went lights out, and so um, they are now flying back, but we can't track them, okay? So just wanted to point that out. Don't know who it is, uh, but uh, they are coming back, and so there you have that. All right, let's get over to our Star Wars map, just show you what's going on with the cyber attacks. Not too much happening. Uh, I mean, compared to what we have typically seen, it's a little quieter. We are still getting peppered. Uh, but this is kind of the usual. Uh, it is a little lighter than uh, I was expecting um, for today. But um, again, this will be a pretty good indicator when we're about to go hot. Uh, we'll see a lot of attacks here. Internet will go down. Utilities will start having issues, things like that here in the U.S. Um, but OK, so let's get over here real fast. This is actually Janes.com. This is a great, uh, a great site for looking up um, defense related uh, topics. And so just want to show you that Denmark is now deploying a battalion in Latvia. Now, um, they are showing as of, let's see here, 2nd of May, 350 soldiers uh, coming inbound of a 750 strong battalion. And then they've got a, a load of vehicles, 300 vehicles and pieces of equipment, including uh, some of the armored uh, personal carriers. And so it looks like they are beefing up right there in Latvia. Now, if you're um, not familiar with Latvia, it's kind of uh, just south. Uh, let me just kind of pull it up here on the map. Uh, what's the best way to show this? Uh, we can go from here. Um, so Romania, Bulgaria, as we head up, this is all Ukraine. This is actually probably a better map, but this is Latvia right here. Estonia, we see some flights going in and out of Estonia. Lithuania right here. Belarus is a foe right not a friend uh these guys are tightly aligned with uh with russia and so and then of course we've got poland here so looks like denmark is putting some butts in the seat down here in latvia okay now over here to early warning now you may remember uh may 9th was supposed to be this big deal where we're talking about uh russia was going to announce his victory and everything was going to be over that was really not the case uh, he did a speech overnight, and it was kind of a non-event. Um, however, it does kind of indicate that he's got his eyes set on NATO and not just Ukraine. Uh, but if we get over to the stocks today, uh, somebody has hit the jiggle the handle. It has a bit, been a big flush. A lot of red on the, on the uh, charts today. Now, it is um, not down to historic lows. You can see it is definitely on the down, downward trend. Uh, but it was actually worse back in April of last year. So, uh, but we look to be headed that same direction. But anyway, that's what it looks like for today in terms of the stock. We've had about three or four days. Uh, it, it locked up over the weekend, but Friday was a bad sell-off. Today looks to be another day of sell-offs. And um, we'll just continue to watch it. But that looks to be what impacted us from the uh, Russian announcement. Okay. Now, here's one uh, I will tell you. This is not Dwight Schrute um, from the office. Uh, this is actually um, Sweden soldiers actually starting to make uh, headway up here in Baltic Island. And uh, they say their soldiers are getting ready for a Russian attack. Now, you may remember when we're over here looking at um, the, the European aspect on our watch list, we have a lot of the Swedish um high-tech bird that's always right up in here flying around uh running some some intelligent stuff all along the the baltic region um so to see them start to get engaged uh and putting um legs and boots you know troops in the region uh tells you that their intelligence gathering would indicate they felt a concern or a reason to go and do that so they are starting now to pull the trigger and put uh, boots on the ground too um, so you've got Denmark engaged, you've got Sweden starting to get engaged. We see assets moving into Finland. Um, and so this would be an indicator everybody's starting to really ramp up uh, for what's coming. Okay. All right. Now over here to Biggs Army Airfield. 
We did have a little increase, but I don't know that this is military related. We've got an Airbus that's a, a national cargo that came in from Harrisburg uh, that arrived this morning. Don't see it on the outbound yet. Uh, we do have it on a scheduled. Looks like it's headed to March Air Force Base or Air Reserve Base in Riverside from there. Um, and then we've got this Omni that came inbound from Grand Rapids. Uh, I'm thinking these, I mean, they could be troops, could also be immigrants. So uh, we'll just continue to watch, see if there's any trends or see if we can see where these things are going, okay? All right, now over here to McGuire, this is actually one of your locations that is set up for inbound immigrants coming from Afghanistan. They continue at a rate of about 2,000 a month. And so we watch this. Now, the only thing we see coming in today was an Atlas Air uh, coming in from England, uh, 747-400. And then that bad dude is rolling out of there, headed to Dover uh, Air Force Base uh, this afternoon. That's a scheduled departure. All right. All right. Now into the camera flights. This is going to be troop movement. All right. So... Uh, you're going to see we've got five flights that are camber. Looks like we've got a lot of troop stuff on the move right now. Most of these are coming out of uh, kind of the Ramstein, Germany area, headed into deeper into um, what appears to be um, southern. So that's probably Sofia, if I had to guess, probably rolling in here into Sofia, into Bulgaria. Um, but a lot of them on the move. And then we've got this one coming back inbound uh right now but uh a couple we don't see the ones coming out of kuwait and things like that but just pointing that out it looks like this is still continuing to be a build-up sophia uh and uh bucharest are the two areas that um are kind of getting a lot of attention right now all right royal air force same thing you can see very heavy traffic in uh in europe uh also right up here in northern africa but it looks like that one actually came out of uh, Nigeria, which is really interesting. Now, one that is already fallen off the chart that you can't see was this one. Um, I'm trying to figure out, oh, here it is, sorry. Uh, flying into Cape Canaveral. So don't know what they're doing in my old romping grounds, but uh, looks like the Royal Air Force is flying into Cape Canaveral uh, uh, Air Force Station. So uh, that is where you get all your launches at your space program things of that nature. So I, I find it interesting to see them coming. That's not uh, a regular occurrence for sure. Okay. Omni Air. This one's coming out of, we got one leaving Seattle, Tacoma, headed over to Japan. That is definitely a troop mover. And then we had one leave Fort Worth, headed up here. Uh, it has since dropped off the board, but it was actually headed up to um, Grand Rapids. Okay. And so, um, again, not sure if that is troop related to Grand Rapids or if that's immigrant related, but this one definitely troop related Seattle to Japan. Again, we are continuing to build up. It isn't uh, the same amount of buildup we're seeing in Europe or in the Middle East, but Asia is definitely still getting peppered with, uh, with uh, boots on the ground there, okay? All right, over to the Ruskies. Oh, snap. Let's hit a reload and see if this thing will give me a little bit of Get a little, little bit of love out of this one. All right, so we got one en route. Looks like it's coming out of Moscow. Now, this is, you may remember, we've, we've had them coming into this general area to the right of the Black Sea several occasions. Now, this one looks like it's uh, going further down south into Turkey. Uh, this is Turkey in here. Uh, and again, they are allies with Turkey. They could be headed down into Libya. Uh, so we will watch that and see where they end up going. But keep in mind, too, Russia's got a pretty good buildup in Libya. After Benghazi uh, went down, uh, Russia put uh, they took over that air base right there. Uh, they've got uh, a lot of assets and a lot of troops in Libya. So uh, we'll continue to watch that one also. OK. All right. Over here now, this is changing pace a little bit. This is actually a swift air. I wanted to show you a couple things. This caught my eye earlier. We had a couple flights come down here uh, this morning. Uh, currently right now, looks like we've got one headed down to Bogota, Colombia from Laredo. We have several headed across the U.S. Uh, remember, these guys are, are kind of supporting the Amazon machine. They're supporting Bureau of Prisons. They're supporting the um, uh, U.S. Air Marshals as well. But 
let me just show you. I, I grabbed a screenshot of it earlier, and I just want to show you what we had. Um, check this out. A little three ship that rolled out of uh, Miami, headed down to some little island here uh, north of, uh, I don't know where that is, Caracas or something. I don't know. Um, but that's uh, back to back to back, all three of them headed down there. So I thought that was an interesting data point uh, to see them go in and out of that area. You don't see that very often, um, I will tell you that. So, all right, let me get back over to this main page. Um, one thing I'm going to cover real fast, let's talk TFRs before I get into Guantanamo Bay. We've had a lot of weird activity going on at the spa lately um, where they're wiping the flights. And so I'm going to point that out. But just show you what we've got going on TFR-wise Got a couple things. We've got this one right here. Looks like Flashbang is headed out there tomorrow uh, for God knows what. Um, but this one, the other day I said uh, it looked like Camp David. You know, from this distance, it does kind of look like Camp David, but it is normally outside of that circle. That is not Camp David. That is actually inside of um, the Brown Zone, the Senior Living Center. And uh, it's tied to the uh, Potomac stuff, but it's a VIP don't know what's happening up there vip wise but it looks like somebody has got something going on in that general region yeah um normally uh, this is where up, up in the north is where you see camp david up here so uh, i was incorrect on that assessment so um let me also show you we got something going on in dallas is it still there yeah it is this i don't know what it's tied to i tried to look it up i couldn't find anything this is downtown dallas but it's a vip in the red now that little red circle right there at the very top that's actually gw bush that's his house um he's had that since he was uh president and so uh but anyway something going on downtown dallas vip related wise okay so i just want to point that out all right let's minimize this and get back over here this is going to be open adsb exchange looking at 282 up over the united states uh again um well, let's get into Guantanamo Bay. Let me just show you what I'm talking about here. It's kind of been an interesting deal. Now, this one coming out of Palm Beach is unique. Uh, normally don't see them coming out of Palm Beach. The flights we see on Tuesday, Fridays are usually out of Fort Lauderdale. So this is a, an out of sequence coming from Palm Beach International. Um, looks like it was a quick turn. Seven, uh, well, actually arrived at 942 and at 1050, about, you know, an hour and 10 minutes later, a bad dude boogied right back out. So it wasn't on ground very long. This is the one that uh, is interesting. This is actually one of your gray birds. This is a Phoenix Air. Um, definitely the guys that are uh, agency related on most cases. Coming out of Washington, D.C., uh, flying in there. Now notice where it goes when it leaves here, Opalaka. Uh, I point that out because we've been tracking for a very long time. Opalaka and Fort Lauderdale are two locations, I believe, are probably black sites where people are getting basically uh, the shakedown before they get sent somewhere. So um, we'll watch it. But again, it's been interesting. These little flights like this will pop in and then they'll erase them. They take them straight off the board. They don't hang out very long. Um, also, you've got a flight here. It looks like on Saturday came in from uh, the, the Brown Zone from Andrews. That's a Delta Airlines flight. Don't know if it's troops, don't know if it is a jury pool or what it is. Uh, if you get over to the board, everything is canceled for the month for the motions in terms of 9-11 guys. So this is probably going to be related to the human traffickers that have been apprehended over the past year. And so, um, but yeah, this is, uh, it's been pretty busy. Pretty busy. A lot of this is normal stuff, but there are a couple things in there peppered. But again, uh, if you get over here to uh, departures, um, that side of it is where you can see things get wiped, right? You don't have any indication that the gray birds are coming and going. And uh, we've had uh, several of those roll in and out over the last uh, couple weeks, all right? These guys right here. And so, um, but just to show you, Phoenix Air, 649 Guantanamo Bay. So you've got got it right here for the record in and out. Um, but again, it goes from uh, there to Opalaka uh, and then Cardsville. That's home base operations. So it's probably empty when it gets going, when it's headed from here to here. OK, but anyway, looks like if we look at it, it flew from home base empty. 
picked up somebody in D.C., took him to Guantanamo Bay, and then it took somebody from Guantanamo Bay over to Opalaka, and then um, from there it went back empty. So, Okay, well, listen, folks, that is going to do it for today on our sit rep. Um, we will be back on Wednesday. Remember, no Q&A today for the members. Uh, we'll be picking that back up on Wednesday. But uh, we'll continue to watch it. Some interesting things going on all over the place, really. And um, if we do have some buildup uh, on the East Coast, it's only a matter of time before people start to get eyes on it and we start to kind of get some some data to support it. Um, again, it looks like uh, all indications in Europe are that we are um, definitely preparing for a war that's coming. Uh, when it'll kick off, I don't know, but um, we continue to put troops in. We continue to feed that machine uh, on a daily basis, and it's just a matter of time. So, all right, listen, that's all. You guys be safe out there. Keep that powder dry uh, and stay frosty. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.